This letter is for those of you who have many troubles and extraordinary powers. If you wish to see how far these powers of yours will take you, cast aside your family, your possessions, and come to our little garden. What would you do if you received such a letter? Well, the three teenagers, Izeyoi, Asuka, and Yu, had no other choice. Right after they received the mysterious message, they were teleported to the little garden. But even though the trip wasn't entirely voluntary, it was warmly welcomed by the troubled children, who were longing for some excitement in their oh-so-boring lives. They find themselves by a lake and quickly discover that they are not alone. To lure the mysterious girl out of her hiding place in the bush, the three children immediately show off their extraordinary powers. Black Rabbit, initially shocked by their lack of discipline, welcomes them to Little Garden and introduces them to the reason for their arrival, the opportunity to participate in the gift games, competitions using the blessings bestowed on people by various war gods, demons, spirits, and stars. The stakes of the games can range from money, land, and resources to gifts, prestige, and even people. However, the conditions of a gift game set by the host of the game must be met in order to win. The rules of a game are always presented on a Gius roll before the game begins. This is also the case in the very first gift game the children are now confronted with. Black Rabbit challenges them to a card game. After winning by circumventing the rules, Izeoi collects his winnings and asks Black Rabbit his question. Are the gift games fun? Black Rabbit confirms this question with great enthusiasm and takes the group to her community. Jin, the leader of their community, greets the newcomers at the entrance. But just as Black Rabbit is about to introduce the three, she notices that Izeoi has disappeared. Asuka and Yu explain he just wanted to take a quick look at the edge of this world. The annoyed Black Rabbit activates her powers and sets off with great leaps to find the problem child, Izeoi. She finds him by a waterfall and is ready to give him a wigging. However, to her great dismay, Izeoi has already challenged a god in the gift game. The Water God, a dragon monster, rises from the water and attacks Izeoi with mighty whirlpools of water. But Izeoi kicks him with tremendous force and defeats him with one blow. Black Rabbit cannot believe her eyes, that a god was just so easily defeated by a human, but is delighted when she learns that the prize for Izeoi's victory is a water tree, which will finally provide her community with an endless source of water. Meanwhile, Jin leads Asuka and Yu into his community, and they sit down at a cafe. Yu reveals that her gift lets her talk to animals. Just as Asuka is about to explain her gift as well, they're interrupted by a tall blonde man who introduces himself as Galdo leader of Forrest Garo. He explains that he wants to recruit the newcomers for his own community and tells them that they have no future in Jin's weak no-name community. The children learned that many years ago, the no-name community was strong and thriving, but lost its name and banner due to an attack of a powerful demon lord. There are now only about 120 members left, most of them children under the age of 10. They're in a very unfortunate situation. But to the great delight of Black Rabbit and Jin, the newcomers decide to take on the challenge and promise to join the no-name community to help it prosper again. The annoyed Galdo is once again questioned by Asuka, who now demonstrates her gift on him. She forces him to reveal the secret of his community's success. They kidnap women and children of their enemies and thus control these communities. What these blackmailed communities don't know, however, is that the hostages have long since been killed by Galdo. When Asuka finally releases Galdo from her control, he furiously transforms into a hairy tiger beast. However, Yu manages to subdue him, and the two challenge him to a fight the next day. After Black Rabbit and Izeoi rejoin the group, they make their way to Shiryasha, a powerful demon lord of the Thousand Eyes trade community who has pledged to protect the peace and thus became the floor master of the east side of Little Garden. Izeoi is intrigued by Shiryasha's power and challenges her. They immediately find themselves on Shiryasha's game board, a vast nightscape with a tall mountain. Shiryasha explains that she is the spirit of the sun and the white knight and summons a griffin to test the player's strength, wisdom, and courage. Yu volunteers and mounts the griffin, which immediately takes a leap around the mountain with her. Yu holds on with great difficulty, but the touch of her necklace given to her by her father gives her the strength she needs to pass the challenge. As a reward, the three receive their gift cards from Shiryasha, which they can use to name and store their gifts. To Shiryasha's great astonishment, however, 
Izayoi's card is unable to identify his gift. After their first exciting day in Little Garden, Asuka, Yu, and Black Rabbit take advantage of Izayoi's water tree and relax in a hot bath. Afterwards, Black Rabbit outfits the girls with new clothes that include protective auras. Meanwhile, Izayoi spots a group of invaders from the Forez Garo community in the territory of the No Names. They beg him to defeat Galdo and destroy the Forez Garo, as they are unable to do so themselves since Galdo has taken their families hostage. Izayoi reveals to them that Galdo has already killed the hostages, but he promises the desperate men that his leader Jin will personally take on Galdo and the Demon Lords and take revenge on them. Jin is annoyed by Izioi's promise and confronts him a little later, but Izioi explains his plan to him. Since the no-name community has neither a name nor a banner, they need something to represent them. He wants to make Jin the face and backbone of the community, to strengthen the cohesion among the few remaining members. Then Jin reveals that there is one more member. Letitia, a former demon lord, is now owned by a high-ranking official and will be offered as a prize in a gift game soon to be held. Izayoi promises Jin to get his friend back, on the condition that Jin manages to win the upcoming battle against Galdo. The setting of the gift game the next day is Galdo's territory, which is completely overgrown with dense jungle plants. Jin, Asuka, and Yu quickly find Galdo in his residence, in the form of a giant roaring tiger with dangerously red glowing eyes. Jin realizes that a vampiric demon must be involved in this. He also identifies the cross sword stuck in the wall as the player's designated weapon. After Yu's unsuccessful attempt to fight Galdo alone, in which she's seriously injured, Asuka sets fire to Galdo's building and lures him into the forest. There, she uses her powers to command the creepers to fetter Galdo, and then orders the cross sword to give her the power she needs to kill Galdo. Thereby, the no names win the game, the thicket disappears, and the Forez Garo community is dissolved. Back at their residence, Black Rabbit is pleased that Izioi will now help them win back their old friend Letitia at the upcoming gift game. As she leaves the room to get tea, a vampire girl suddenly appears outside the window. She attacks Izioi, but he is able to fend it off and immediately goes on the counterattack. The others, alerted by the noise of the fight, immediately rush into the room, and Black Rabbit stops Izioi. She explains that the girl is her friend Letitia, a former demon lord and pure-blood vampire. After things calm down a bit, Asuka confronts Letitia about why she helped Galdo and gave him mighty powers through her bite. Letitia explains that she wanted to test the powers of the three newcomers to see if they were worthy of being entrusted with her former community. But even after their victory, Letitia is still not completely convinced and challenges Izayoi to a duel with lances. However, the battle is abruptly interrupted when the group is attacked by powerful rays raining down from the sky, the power of Gorgon. To save Asuka, Letitia sacrifices herself and is turned to stone by the rays. Then the fighters of the Perseus community appear and take the petrified Letitia to return her to her rightful owner, Laius. However, Laius has changed his plans for Letitia. Instead of offering her as a prize in a gift game, he wants to sell her to a well-paying buyer. To negotiate Letitia's fate, the no-names go to Shiriasha to speak with Laius. Laius offers them a deal. In exchange for Letitia, he wants to make Black Rabbit his vassal. He gives them a week to think it over. A little later, Black Rabbit pays Laius a visit on his terrace. She challenges him to a duel, of which, at first, Laius wants nothing to do with. But when she presents him with the stakes, a red and a blue ball, for which Izioi had defeated the Kraken and the Grae, Laius agrees. These spheres have the authority to challenge a legend, which is immediately used, as the challenge of the Legend of Laius begins immediately. The no-names find themselves in front of his castle, and in order to follow the legend exactly, they must manage to not be spotted by the guards before killing Laius. Asuka manages to disable some of the guards with the power of the water tree, and Yu can sense the presence of the invisible guards and incapacitates them before they can spot Izioi and Jin. Thus, Black Rabbit, Izioi and Jin manage to get to Laius unnoticed, whom they find sitting on a throne with the petrified Letitia standing next to him. Laius summons the demon lord Algol, who immediately petrifies everything around him. Laius and Algol join forces to fight Izioi, but just as Algol is about to petrify the entire arena, Izioi delivers a violent blow directly to his forehead, 
not only defeating the demon lord, but also destroying his gift of petrification. After being freed, Letitia thanks the group for her rescue and pledges to serve them as their housemaid as she feels deeply indebted to them. A few days later, Izioi, Asuka, and Yu receive a mysterious letter. It's an invitation to celebrate the rise of the fire dragon. The three are outraged that Black Rabbit wants to deprive them of this fun festival and threaten, in a letter to her, to leave the no-name community if Black Rabbit does not track them down before the end of the day. Black Rabbit is furious with the three problem children and immediately sets off with Letitia to find them. Meanwhile, the kids ponder how to get to the celebration 980,000 miles away on the north side and decide to ask Shiryasha for help. Shiryasha explains that she's the co-organizer of the festival, the goal of which is to declare 11-year-old Sandora the new northern floor master and head of Salamandra. Shiryasha claps her hands twice and immediately teleports them to the north side. But Black Rabbit is not long in coming and suddenly stands in front of the three runaways in a rage. She first catches Yu and then makes her way to Asuka and Izioi, who are soon tracked down again by Black Rabbit. However, Izioi does not give up without a fight, and the two engage in a fierce battle above the rooftops of Salamandra. The fight ends in a draw, but the two brawlers are promptly interrupted by the MPs of the Salamandra community and led to their leader, Sandora. However, she rejoices at the arrival of the no-names and lets them get away with it, much to the displeasure of her brother. To make amends, however, the no-names promise to protect Salamandra from the impending attack of a demon lord, prophesized by a member of the Thousand Eyes. Meanwhile, Asuka wants to befriend a fairy who claims to belong to the Rattenfanger, or Pied Piper community. The two stroll through an exhibition together and marvel at Dean, an impressive steel giant of the Pied Piper. Suddenly, the lights go out in the exhibition hall and a bunch of aggressive rats attack Asuka and the fairy. The rats seem to be under the control of someone very powerful as Asuka cannot gain power over them with her gift. At the last moment, the two are saved by Letitia in the evening, Shiryasha announces that Black Rabbit will host and ref the finals of the Battle of the Creators tomorrow, in which you, who qualified for the games in a battle against a stone monster, will face opponents from the Will-O-Wisp and Pied Piper communities. Shiryasha explains that the Pied Piper, the Rat Catchers, are related to the Pied Piper of Hamlin and the Grim Grimoire communities, once strong communities that were under the control of a powerful demon lord, and disbanded after being defeated in a gift game. But now, with the Pied Piper's support, the threat of the Grim Grimoire seems to be resurfacing with the impending attack on Salamandra. This leads Asuka to question the identity of the little fairy who slumbers on her lap during the meeting. The next day, Yu decides to fight alone in the finals, despite being given the option of competing with a partner. Her opponents from the Will-O-Wisp community also arrive at the arena, Aisha and her partner Jack-O-Lantern. Suddenly, the players find themselves in an underwood maze that they must either escape from first or destroy the enemy's gift to win the game. Yu flees through the maze while Aisha rides on Jack, shooting blue flames at Yu. However, when Yu figures out where the exit of the maze is, Jack reveals his true powers as an immortal demon, and Yu sees no other option but to admit defeat. Just as she regrets her decision of not having chosen a partner in the game, thousands of black Gius rolls rain down from the sky. The Demon Lord's impending attack is upon them. Suddenly, Shiryasha is separated from the no-names and sealed in a sphere of black smoke as she is not allowed to participate according to the rules of the game. The no-names learn the condition of the gift game, which is to shatter the false legend and make the true legend known, referring to the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamlin. Izeoi immediately decides to take on the Demon Lord alone and attacks anyone who gets in his way. In the process, however, he gets into a fight with Wesser, the embodiment of the River Wesser from the legend. In the meantime, Letitia first fights against the huge Strom, and then, together with Sandora, against Pest, the demon lord of the Black Plague. Ratten, in the legend the embodiment of the rats, plays on her pipe, and the giant rats, as well as the inhabitants of Salamandra, involuntarily dance to her tune and rampage throughout the city. Asuka confronts the mind-controlled rats, but her powers are not strong enough to stop them. Suddenly, Black Rabbit makes use of her authority as Judge Master and calls a meeting of the opposing parties to negotiate the battle and draft a resolution. 
The hosts, however, insist that there has been no violation of the rules, even in restricting Shiryasha, and the Little Garden officials, who are connected through Black Rabbit's ears, can see neither misconduct nor illegality. And Pest has more shocking news to announce. She has already infected the residents of Salamandra with Black Plague, and thus intends to force her opponents to surrender. But Jin, who has been studying intensively in the library for the last few weeks, knows all about the legend and negotiates with Pest. The games are to be continued in a week and given a time limit of 24 hours. In addition, Black Rabbit is to be allowed to participate in the game. With the prospect of winning everything in the shortest time possible, Pest agrees to the deal. Asuka, meanwhile, wakes up in a dark dungeon. The fairy is still with her, and she is surrounded by shining swarms of fairies who urge her to accept their gift, the steel giant Dean, which she is to bring under her control. A few days later, the symptoms of the Black Plague are already noticeable among the inhabitants. Yu is not spared either, and lies ill in bed with Izeoi at her side. Izeoi ponders over the legend and suddenly has an epiphany. The attackers are not the real Pied Piper of Hamlin, but only the Pied Piper of Hamlin from the Grimm's fairy tales, who altered and added to the real events that took place in 1284. He also realizes the real reason why Shiryasha was forbidden to participate. When the Black Plague broke out hundreds of years ago, it was able to spread so quickly only because the sun entered a cooling stage. Since Shiryasha holds power over the sun in Little Garden, she poses a deadly threat to Pest. But Izioi finds a solution to win the game. The condition, you must shatter the false legend and make the true legend known, must refer to the stained glass panels of Hamlin, which have retold the legend for centuries. After the one-week break, the game continues. As Pest realizes that the opponents seem to have solved the first riddle of the stained glass panels, she activates her full power and summons the city of Hamlin. Rattan and several Stroms attack Jin and the other residents of Salamandra, who are about to destroy the stained glass panels in the church. But Letitia is able to fend off Rattan, and just as Strom is about to reach for Jin, Asuka appears with Dean and is able to fend him off as well. Dean manages to defeat the Stroms one by one with powerful blows. After all are defeated, Asuka gives Rattan the opportunity to play one last song on her pipe. With her Song of Illusions, she almost succeeds in enchanting Asuka and bringing Dean under her control, but Asuka remains strong. Rattan admits defeat and vanishes into thin air. Izeoi and Wesser also engage in a fierce battle. Since Wesser has received new divinity from Pest, his power has doubled, and he seems to be Izeoi's first truly worthy opponent. Izeoi exposes Wesser as the true Pied Piper of Hamlin and the only one who belongs to the true story of 1284. Pest, Rattan, and Strom were only added to the story later. Wesser confirms Izeoi's assumptions and launches his next attack, but Izeoi gains the upper hand and is finally able to defeat him. With that, Wesser also vanishes into thin air. Meanwhile, Sandora and Black Rabbit are busy with Pest. Sandora shoots her flames and Black Rabbit her lightning bolts, but Pest can easily fend them all off, as the Demon Lord draws her powers from the malice and resentment of the 80 million deaths of Black Plague. Sensing that her two comrades, Rattan and Wesser, have been defeated, she lashes out in a fierce all-out attack, sending a wind of death across the city. Yu tries to save a child from the wind and is just saved by Dean herself. Izeoi now also rushes to the aid of Black Rabbit and Sandora in the fight against Pest. Suddenly, Black Rabbit draws her gift card and teleports them all to the Moon Palace, Chandra Mahal. Pest, weakened by this teleportation to the moon, can now be caught by Sandora's rings of fire, and Asuka commands Dean to kill Pest with the powerful Spear of Indra. Back in Salamandra, Sandora proudly announces her victory over the Demon Lord. The little fairies tell Asuka their true story of the 130 children of Hamlin who wandered along the Wesser River to found their own community before a natural disaster killed them. Now they can finally return to their time, leaving Asuka with Dean and the little fairy, who she names Mayrun. In the Salamandra Palace, Izioi confronts Sandora's brother, who admits to having orchestrated the events in order to make Sandora known as the rightful ruler. Izioi spares his life under the promise that the Salamandra community will stand by the no-names in their future battles. Finally back home, the no-name community looks out over their barren land, 
but they are full of hope for the future and have great plans to make their land fertile again and thereby restore their community to its former glory. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.